Good morning, everybody. This is Donald Bondaw, Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Cards and Collectibles, with an episode number 27, Hall of Fame Friday with Lou Bordeaux. And walk off wax box number six of ten, and the Bipster box three more packs. Hopefully everybody is having a great day. We've got Bipster in at ten o'clock. We've got Big Ray in at ten o'clock. What a beautiful day today around Central Indiana, sunny with temps around the eighties. Might even fish in the back pond today if I have the energy. The Bipster says hello all. So we got Bipster in with one, two, three. Big Ray in twice. Bipster in four times. So Bipster's almost maxed out. All right. Hopefully you all are having a great start to your Friday today. Big Ray's in with three. Big Ray's in with three. Big Ray's in with four. Bipster's got his five. And as soon as I see the first 10.02 in the chat, I'll refresh it. And we will be good to go for the early birds today. <laughs> Hopefully you all are having, a again, a great start to your Friday. Big Ray says, got some great cards in today. There we go. Awesome. So we've got... Big Ray in with his five. We do have 1002 with that Big Ray. Let me refresh the chat. Double check and count up here. We got Bipster with one, two, three, four, five. And Big Ray with one, two, three, four, and five. So Bipster and Big Ray ball cards and auctions have got their free entries let me get into the wheel of names and get the two early birds let me get the two early birds in here get my wheel of names loaded up here and we'll get ready for some hall of Fri hall of fame friday fun hopefully you all are having a great start to your day as i am all right let me get uh Bipster and Big Ray in here. Oh, I can get you in one felt swoop. We've got five there and five there for both. Oh, not that far down. Ah. Let me see if I can do it right this time. Five Big Rays and five Bipsters in one felt swoop here. Let me paste this in here on the Wheel of Names. Give you an update where we are in the giveaway for the month of May. And I'm debating on how I'm going to do my sale the end of the month, which will be in two more Saturdays. So to this Saturday will be the 15th. Next Saturday will be the 22nd. And then on the 29th of May will be our next sale. I think it might be a vintage extravaganza in our next sale. So probably some of the people that collect most of the newer stuff might not like it as much, but we'll see how much activity we get in the vintage world. Okay. Might be done dollar day specials for our end of month sale in the vintage category. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Get these entries in. We have 257 entries in the Wheel of Names. And we are going to town still. Uh, weekend Church re, re, Retreat? Or is it a retreat? Is it a Weekend Church Retreat? Starts soon. Hope you have a great day, all. Got some great cards in today. I like that one. Read that one. I think I've already uh, had too much luck getting a walk off. All right, I seen you guys chatting about something. Did they do the Hall of Fame selectees for 2021? And if so, who made it into the Hall of Fame? 
who are the new Hall of Fame inductees for 2021? Just kind of curious on that one. Is this for, for next year's induction, induction ceremony, or is it, is it just uh, chit-chat and chatter? Because I thought it's not till the end of the year that they start making... I don't think they're doing any. I didn't think they were doing any for 2021. They're having the ceremony for last year's inductees um, this summer in Cooperstown. So just kind of curious. Trying to adjust things here. Um, let me get this shifted there. There we go. Now I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> now I can see what I'm doing. Sometimes it helps when you know what you're doing, if you know what I mean. Let's see, I can move this right here so you guys can see my bell dinger down here. You can see the top of my bell. The top of my, the top of my bell. And right at 10.10, we'll start getting into our content at hand today. Again, we are doing the Hall of Fame and uh, Biography for Lou Bordeaux. All right. Then we'll be doing Walk Off, walk off Wax, uh, Mini Blaster, number 6 of 10. And then we will go into the Bipster Box, as always. The Bipster Box is getting low. The Bipster box is getting low, but that's okay. I hear it might get refilled one last time before we end the Bipster box series. So hopefully you all are excited for today's content. I'm working on different projects, working on different things. I gotta after I end the stream today, I gotta work on getting some more auctions listed up on my eBay channel. For next weekend all right so hopefully you all are getting ready to have some fun and a Facebook friend of mine said he had they they have a uh, an Amazon purchase they made and they're sending it to me as a gift so hopefully when I get that in, I'll be able to share it with the channel. As soon as that shows up, he says, he asked me, he said, are you, how are you doing on getting your, com, your uh, set you're working on 2021 Tops Heritage? And I said, I'm getting there. I've got probably getting closer to probably at least a third or more of the high number series so I don't know for sure how long it's going to take me to get the high number series finished but when I do I will I will share the complete set then of um, the tops 2021 heritage hopefully with the high number but I think they do, as far as I know, don't they even do a higher number series? So the current set is from uh, one, 1 to 400, and then 401 to 500 is uh, the high number series. So do they do a higher high number series? Or is it they just do a high number uh what, what would you call that? Like a Series 2? Uh, just kind of curious how that works for sure. Maybe Bipster could enlighten us. I think Bipster might have taken off. I don't see no uh, top of the head yesterday and top of the bell today. Both round and shiny. Yeah, but it's round and shiny all right, Terrapay Gray. <laughs> it's round and shiny, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, we got less than a minute to go, and then we will get into Lou Bordeaux's biography. And then, of course, after that, we will continue on with part two and part three of our content for today. Sorry, Don, couldn't resist a good ribbing. No problem. One of these years, I might surprise you and just grow it back, and you can see my white hair. You can see my... 
pretty much mostly I used to have brown hair when I was young there Big Ray I used to have brown hair and now I'm Mr. Mr. Whitehead if I if I if I grew my beard out and bleached it I could probably uh, pose as a Santa Claus I could probably pose as a Santa Claus for sure but we do have 1010 and let's get into Lou Bordeaux for our content here when we get through uh, one I have about seven different cards not many cards for Lou Bordeaux kind of like my other PCs in my Hall of Fame but let's go into Lou Bordeaux is it Bordeaux or Bordeaux I always said it Bordeaux because I think he's French as far as I remember but Lou Bordeaux nicknamed Old Shufflefoot Handsome Lou or the Good Kid was born on July 17, 1917 passed away on August the 10th 2001 was an American professional baseball player and manager he played in Major League Baseball for 15 seasons primarily as a shortstop on the Cleveland Indians and managed four teams for 15 seasons including 10 seasons as a player manager he was also a radio announcer for the Chicago Cubs and in college was a dual sport athlete in both baseball and earning All-American honors in basketball for the University of Illinois. Bordeaux was an all-star for seven seasons. In 1948, Bordeaux won the American League Most Valuable Player Award and managed the Cleveland Indians to the World Series title. He won the 1944 American League batting title, uh, batting 327, and led the league in doubles in 1941, 1944, and 1947. He led the American League shortstops in fielding eight times, and Bordeaux still holds the MLB record for hitting the most consecutive doubles in a game at four. Set on July 14, 1946. In 1970, Bordeaux was elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame as a player. Uh, going from blonde to white currently. I feel the struggle, Donald. <laughs> so you used to be a blonde to white. Huh? Yeah, I used to be. I used to be a dark brown-haired young man back in the day. Okay, so let me uh, do a refresh on the chat here, and we'll get into the next section here and show you the next card for Lou Bordeaux. Let me move this one over here out of the way. All right, this first one that you were looking at here is a uh, 1993 Lou Bordeaux from uh, the Ted Williams collection. Okay, so next up to bat here, we got the, his Cooperstown card when he was inducted in 1970 into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Okay, so as far as his early life, Bordeaux was born in Harvey, Illinois, the son of Bertie Henry and Louise Bordeaux. His father was of French ancestry, his mother was Jewish, and both of his maternal grandparents were observant Orthodox Jews, with whom, when he was young, he celebrated Passover cedars. He was raised Catholic by his father after his parents divorced. He graduated from Tom Thornton or from Thornton Township High School in Harvey, Illinois, where he led the Flying Clouds to three straight Illinois high school championship games, finishing first in 1933 and second in 1934-1935. Right. As far as his college baseball and basketball days, Bordeaux attended the University of Illinois at Urbana Champagne, where he was a member of the Phi Sigma Kappa fraternity and captain of the basketball and baseball teams. During the 1936-37 uh, basketball and baseball seasons, Bordeaux led each fighting uh, Illini team to a Big Ten Conference Championship. During the 1937-38 basketball season, Bordeaux was named the NCAA Men's Basketball All-American. In 
Well, still at Illinois, the Cleveland Indians general manager, Cy Slapanaka, paid him an undisclosed sum in return for agreeing to play baseball for the Indians after he graduated. Due to this agreement, Bordeaux was ruled ineligible for college yet sports by the Big Ten Conference officials. During his senior year at Illinois, he played professional basketball with the Hammond Caesar All-Americans of the National ba Basketball League. Despite playing professional baseball with Cleveland, Bordeaux earned his Bachelor of Science in Education from Illinois in 1940 and worked as the Illinois freshman basketball coach for 1939 and 1940 teams. Bordeaux stayed as an assistant coach for the 1941-42 Illinois Fighting Illini men's basketball team, and he was instrumental in recruiting future Nysmith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame inductee Andy Phillip to play for Illinois. All right, so let's move on to his next card in the stack here. So this last card was a 2013 Panini product. And then our next one is another Panini product for his Cooperstown induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. All right. So as far as his professional baseball career, when he started with the Cleveland Indians, Bordeaux made his major league debut on September 9, 1938, for the Cleveland Indians at 20 one as a third baseman in his first game. In 1939, Indian manager Ossie Vitt told him that he would have to move from his normal third base position to shortstop since established slugger Ken Keltner already had the regular third base job. In 1940, his first full year as a starter, he batted 295 with 46 doubles and 101 RBIs and was elected selected for the All-Star Game for the first five consecutive seasons. MLB canceled the 1945 game due to wartime travel restrictions and did not name All-Stars. Bordeaux helped make history in 1941 as a key figure in stopping the 56-game hitting streak by Joe DiMaggio. After two sparkling stops by uh, Keltner, at third base on hard ground balls earlier in the game, Bordeaux snagged a bad hop grounder to short barehanded and start, started a double play retiring DiMaggio at first. He finished the season with a modest 257 batting average but had a league leading 50. 45 doubles. After the 1941 season, owner Alva Bradley promoted Indians manager Roger picked Nepal to general manager and appointed 25-year-old Bordeaux as a player manager. Bordeaux played and managed the Indians throughout World War II, playing basketball, had put a strain on Bordeaux's ankles that turned into arthritis, um, which classified him as 4F and thus ineligible for military service. In 1944, Bordeaux turned 134 double plays, the most ever by a player manager in MLB history. When he bought the Indians in 1947, Bill Veek, after being approached by Bordeaux, renewed the player manager agreement with mixed feelings on both sides. However, Bordeaux hit 355 in 1948. Cleveland won the American League pennant and the World Series, the Indians' first World Series championship in 28 years, and only the second in Indians' history. With Beek and Bordeaux public publicly acknowledging each other's role in the team's success. And then in his latter career, Bordeaux was released by the Indians as both player and manager following the 1950 season. He signed with the Boston Red Sox, playing full-time in 1951. Moving up to player manager in 1952 and managing from the bench 
1953 and 1954. He then became the first manager of the Kansas City Athletics in 1955 after their move from Philadelphia until he was fired after 104 games in 1957 and replaced Harry Kraft. He last managed the Chicago Cubs in 1960. Okay, so let's move this card out of the way here. And this was from a 2000 and, uh, da, 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 where are you hiding there? 2012 Panini product. So, and then next we have another card up here showing an older style baseball reprint of Lou Bordeaux at shortstop. All right. Next we have in our biography is uh, Fighting... Illini, it's Il I Nai. Il I Nai? Il I Nai. Il I Nai. Il I Nai? I all of a sudden don't like him knowing that he was the end of the Maggio streak. But what's he supposed to do, right? He's got to do his job. <laughs> That's what they pay him to do, right? <laughs> That's pretty neat, though. You liked him until you just found out that interesting fact about him. Well, you know, it's just like, you know, if if, if you were the one that that caused Cal Ripken Jr. to, to end his stream before he could beat... Well, that's another story for another day. That's a long story. That was a lot of consecutive games for Cal Ripken Jr., he even played injured a couple times. That's how much of an Iron Man he was. So the next section here is called the Bordeaux Shift. Bordeaux is credited with inventing the infield shift, which came to be known at colloquially as the Bordeaux Shift, because slugging Red Sox superstar Ted Williams was a dead pull hitter. He moved most of his Cleveland Indian field. Indian fielders to the right of second base against the splendid splinter, leaving only third baseman and the left fielder to the left of second, but also very close to second base. Far to the right of their normal positions, with characteristic stubborn pride, Williams refused the obvious advice from the teammates to hit or bunt to left against the Bordeaux shift, but great hitter that he was not changing his approach against the shift didn't affect his hitting very much. Bordeaux later admitted that he that the shift was more about psyching out Williams rather than playing him to pull. I always considered the Bordeaux shift a psychological rather than a tactical ploy, he declared in his autobiography, The Player Manager. So let's now I'll go on to our next card for Lou Bordeaux. This one is from a 1989 Pacific Trading Cards product, in case you were wondering. And next we have a Lou Bordeaux with the Indians with Topps 65th, 65 Years of Baseball card. Okay? You got it. <laughs> Il I Nai. Il I Nai. And you expect me to remember that, right? <laughs> Broadcasting. Bordeaux did play by play for Cubs games in 1958 1959 before switching roles with manager Jolly Chelly, Charlie Grimm, in 1960. But after only one season as Cubs manager, Bordeaux returned to the radio booth and remained there until 1987. He also did radio play-by-play -play for the Chicago Bulls in 1966 through 1968 and worked on Chicago Blackhawks radio and TV games for WGM as well. The presence of a Hall of Fame announcer affected at least one game on June 23, 1976. The Cubs were two runs behind at home in the fourth inning of the second game of a doubleheader against the Pittsburgh Pirates at home when the umpires called the game on account of darkness. 
since there were no lights at Wrigley Field until 1988, announcing that the game would be resumed at the same point the next day as was normally the case in those days, but Bordeaux knew the rules better than anyone else in the park. It turned out, for he went down quickly to the clubhouse and pointed out to the umpires that a game that was not yet an official game could not be treated as a suspended game. It had not gone five innings, or four and a half, with the home team leading. As neither was the case, and as such as to be replayed from the first pitch, as was the rule in a rainout. The umpires called the National League office, found Bordeaux was correct, and removed the two runs, the two run Cubs deficit. All right, let's move into. We've got two little sections to go here, but let's move on. We've got two cards left here. This one here was a uh, a reprint card, uh, but this particular card here is from a I think it's a 2016. I think this was a 2016 tops reprint of an original Lou Bordeaux card. Pretty cool looking though. Pretty cool looking. All right. So next we got here is a year to remember. All right. Let's see if you can remember what happened in 1948. 1948, a year to remember. And we'll read the back of that card after this next section. So life after and honors. Bordeaux was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1970 with 77.33% of the vote. That same year, his uniform number five was retired by the Cleveland Indians. He wore number four with the Red Sox. In 1973, the city of Cleveland renamed a street bordering Cleveland Municipal Stadium after Bordeaux. Bordeaux Drive in Urbana, Illinois is also named after Bordeaux. In 1990, the Cleveland Indians established the Lou Bordeaux Award, which is given every year to the organization's minor league player of the year. In 1992, Bordeaux's number five jersey was retired by the Illinois Fighting, uh oh, here we go again, the Illini baseball program. Bordeaux is only one of three Illinois Fighting Illini athletes to have their number retired, or two athletes being Illinois Fighting Il I Nye players, Red Grange and Dick Buckus. Okay, so a year to remember. 1948. Let's see what the back of this one says here on this card. It says player manager Lou Bordeaux, the American League MVP, hit two home runs and two singles to lead the Indians to an 8-3 win over the Red Sox in the first American League playoff for pennant. Uh, rookie Gene Bearden takes 20 games. Joe DiMaggio tops the American League with 39 home runs and 155 RBIs. Stan Musial misses National League home run title by one, but leads the league in every other major category. Rex Barney tosses a no-hitter. Satchel Page at 42, going on 50. Pitches shutouts for in first two major league starts. Pat Siri bashes four home runs in an 11 inning game. Babe Ruth dies at age 53. Braves win the first National League pennant in 34 years. Red Schoendice hits eight doubles over three games. Musial gains his third MVP award. Ted Williams takes second American League batting crown in row with a 369 batting average. Indians defeat the Braves four games to two in the World Series. Harry Bitching, or Breaching tops the National League in ERA with strikeouts, and Alvin Dark is the National League Rookie of the Year. 
Detroit becomes the last team to start playing night games at home. This is from a uh, 1989 score product where they had, I believe these were like insert cards that you could get. It was a small 56 card set in that one there. And now on to his last section in his biography, his personal life. Bordeaux married, let me see, did I miss anything here? You got it, Jackie Robinson. I smell a home run with a bat flip and a walk-off win. <laughs> Big Rays ball game. Wonder how he stayed out of the war. Just didn't get his number drawn, I guess. Oh, no, they said it earlier in the, um, in the biography. He ended up having some arthritis in his feet or something that uh, gave him a, uh, a rating to where he couldn't go in the military. Yeah, I pay attention to those things like that. So he could have been drafted, but he wasn't because he had, he had arthritis in his feet. So that was a disqualification for the military. So let me do a refresh on the chat here so I know where I left off. Let's get into our final section. Again, Bordeaux married Della de Ruder in 1938, and together they had four children. His daughter, Sharon, married Denny McLean, a former star pitcher with the Detroit Tiger, Tigers, who was the last 30-game winner in the major leagues with 31-6 and six for the world champion 1968 Detroit Tigers. Bordeaux had a home in Frankfurt, Illinois for many years, and he died on August the 10th, 2001, due to cardiac arrest at St. James Medical Center in Olympia Fields, Illinois. He was 84. He received a Catholic funeral, and his body was interred in Pleasant Hill Cemetery. All right, so let's go through this last one. Oh, I forgot to mention this. How about I mention this really quick, and then we'll... It says, Do you remember Fenway Park, October 4th, 1948? Great moments in baseball. I like these three, 3D type effects where it changes when you... So after I do the recap of his career, we will read the back of this card to end the Bordeaux biography. So Lou Bordeaux, again... Uh, he was a shortstop slash manager during his career. Um, he was born July 17, 1917 in Harvey, Illinois. He died August 10, 2001 at the age of 84 in Olympia Fields, Illinois. He batted right through right. His MLB debut was September 9, 1938 for the Cleveland Indians. His last MLB appearance was August 24, 1952 for the Boston Red Sox. His batting average was 295. His home runs were 68. His runs batted in were 789. His managerial record when he, while he was a manager, it was 1,162 wins and 1,224 losses with a .487 uh, winning percentage. As a player, he played for the Cleveland Indians from 1938 to 1950, the Boston Red Sox in 1951 and 52, and then as a manager, he managed the Cleveland Indians while he played in 1942 to 1950, the Boston Red Sox from 1952 to 1954, and then uh, the Kansas City Athletics from 1955 to 1957, and one he managed one year for the Cubs in 1960. He was an eight times All Star from 1940 to 1945, 1947, and 1948. He was a World Series champion in 1948, an American League MVP in 1948, a batting champion in 1944. Uh, the Cleveland Indians retired as number five, and the Cleveland in he's in the Cleveland Indians Hall of Fame and the National Baseball Hall of Fame, inducted in 1970 with a vote of 77.33% in the ninth ballot. Okay, so now without further ado, we will go through um, the back of this card. 
for the history of this one. Lou, Lou brings the tribe flag. When the 1948 American League season ended in a tie between the Indians and the Red Sox, the first playoff game in league history was scheduled for the next day at Fenway Park. Managing the Indians was 31-year-old Lou Bordeaux. The team's superb shortstop, who had batted 355 and won the MVP award. He started rookie Gene Bearden on one day's rest and promptly put the tribe ahead with a first inning home run. After the, the Sox tied the game, Lou singled to lead off the fourth and scored when Ken uh, Keltner hit a three run homer. In the fifth, Lou hit another home run and singled in the seventh. He went four for four, had two RBIs, and scored three runs. Bearden pitched a five-hitter for his 20th victory as the Indians won 8-3 to three to become champions of the American League, and it was a matchless performance by a matchless manager. And this here was from... Um, 1988 score product, another 56 card insert set. Okay, so that covers our Lou Bordeaux cards for the Lou Bordeaux biography for today. Michael Heath is in the house. Good afternoon, tall. I'm about to get a shower. Thanks to Miss Blaze. Thanks to Miss Blaze. All right. All right there, Michael and Big Ray, we are going to get ready to move into part two of our stream. Let me put Lou Bordeaux away here. For now, I'll put him back in my Hall of Fame sorts when I get a chance here. And then, oh wait, you know what? I got that backwards. Let me just fix these really quick. So I put them in the right order that I put them in my sort, in my Hall of Fame. When I put them back, all right, sorry, <laughs> look kind of strange. Whoa, I'm going to fall backwards. All right, so it is now time for our walk-off wax. Walk-off wax. This is kind of like uh, what Kevin does with his Fairfield Friday. I don't think Kevin is going to be doing another Fairfield Friday uh, this week. I talked to him earlier in the week, and he said he was going to be out of town, so maybe next week. He'll be done is next. Uh, Joe Mansman at Donald Bumblebee by God's grace at Michael Heath. Weed eater and dog poop don't go well. Ew. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have any pets, but I do have to watch it in the front yard because people walk through our neighborhood and they don't clean. They don't scoop the poop from their pets. And yeah, I've had some bombs left in my front yard. <laughs> Oh, boy. I can imagine, yes, weed eater and dog poop don't go well. Dog poop probably went everywhere. It probably got scattered in abundance, right? But this, this is a fun series. I'm glad I found this. It's kind of almost like a, a, a blaster, since I can't find any product locally. It's worth it for me to buy these for $20 and see what kind of sweetness we can pull in here because uh, it says what will you do when you hit a walk-off walk-off wax mini blaster six great packs inside three to four modern packs 2018 to 21 along with two to three classic wax packs ranging in age from 1981 to 2007 and you are guaranteed one relic or auto in each box, guaranteed, guaranteed. All right. So just show. I'm going to just show you the box a little bit. Um, I'm putting 91 top set and pages, and checking for gum stains. There you go. Awesome, Pipster. So. Post your hits on social media for a chance to win great prizes. I've never done that, but. Uh, I just like promoting their product when I, when we do it on our Hall of Fame Fridays. So this is box number 6 of 10. You can see in the back here I've got four more boxes to go here. And then I'll probably do a 
I'll continue this series of advertising for Walk on Wax, but I'll probably do a repack. I'll do a repack of uh, putting packs of cards in the box with a guaranteed hit, just like they give on the label of either an autograph or a memorabilia card. So that's what we'll be doing when I do the 10, and then we'll just keep the series going, you know. I don't know when we'll end. We'll, I probably won't number the boxes after that. But yeah, you can go, uh, they're on Facebook, uh, backslash Walk Off Wax. They're on, uh, I don't know if that's Instagram, Walk Off Wax, uh, Twitter, they're at Walk Off Wax, and YouTube is their Walk Off Wax channel. So subscribe to them on YouTube, and maybe, uh, I don't, I think they only got a couple of videos up there when I went and checked it out. All right, let's see, um, and this side is all the same, but this side here kind of tells you, it says we started off Walk Off Wax in 2020, just like you, we were tired of overpriced hobby boxes and little or no value. Empty retail store shelves and mystery boxes full of 50 cent packs and penny cards. So we started Walk Off Wax. Great value great variety and guaranteed hits so if you feel you have hit a walk off with this box all we ask is that you step back up to the plate again and try to hit another so of course the box odds are one out of one box you'll get a relic one out of three boxes you'll get an autograph um, one out of 12 boxes, you'll get an autograph relic, which I don't think we've got yet, but I haven't gone through 12 boxes yet. And then that is their website here, www.walkoffwax.com. Okay, and that is what the top of the box looks like. And it's not like a Fairfield box where on the bottom they put a date on here when they manufactured them and stuff. But other than that, it is a fun product to open for sure I'm just funning buddy <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. yeah I'm sitting here with a knife no I would never do that that wouldn't that get some ratings huh <laughs> just just messing with everybody I don't even know why I'm going on the side here I've got enough of a cut on top there to, to take the plastic off the box and then we'll see what we get in. Oops. This box of walk off wax. Okay. Do you like the way they do this here? Think on jabs once they had a. All right. Looks like a. Feels like a thicker card might be in here. We'll see that. We'll always do the, the hit and that last. Right, the box is empty, so this will go in my walk off wax box collection here. That is box number six. <laughs> Let's see what kind of packs we get here. One, two, three, four, five, six packs. So we've got six packs. We've got a big league baseball. Not a big fan of big league, but this is a 2020 big league. I don't know if I ever opened one of those. We do have a Diamond King 2019. Then we've got a 2019 Series 1 Tops. Okay. We've got a wax pack of 1992 Tops Major League Baseball. Okay, that goes on the top there. And then we've got a um, bum, 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 2020 Series 1. Okay, I think we have a 2000. I'll, put the, I'll save that one for last, probably. That's the better. The newest pack so far. And then we've got here, we've got a 1994 Major League Baseball player cards from Score. <coughs> Usually you get at least one hobby pack, and this is a hobby pack. So this will go here. And we will put these here. So we'll do the 1992 Topps Baseball Cards, the 1994 Score, the 2019 Series 1, the 2019 Diamond Kings, 
then the 2020 Big League, and the 2020 Tops Series 1 in our opening. And then again, once we finish this box, we will be doing the Bipster box. Okay, we will be opening the Bipster box. So stay tuned for that. For additional entries, uh, gum, gum for dum dum. Who remembers the movie, quote, and movie? Gum, gum for dum dum. Hmm. Bipster, you're quite the movie aficionado. <laughs> All right, let me do a refresh here on the chat so I know where I left off, and let's get into pack number one. There's no chewing gum in this one, is there? No, I, I think Tops gave up with chewing gum by 1994. All right, but we will see what kind of sweetness we can find in this 1992 Tops. Okay. All right, there we go. Let me uh, get my little. What is that there? Oh, I know why that's there. Don't mind me. I'm mumbling to myself. I'm just getting something ready here so I can look at my cheat sheet here for possible Hall of Famers out of these packs. And some awesome rookies, hopefully. But we've got right on the top there, we got a Hall of Famer, Dave Winfield. You know what? Let me, uh, I'm getting too much of a. It's a nice sunny day here today. So I'm going to turn off my light. I think that, yeah, I think that's going to help out a little bit. I got some bright light coming in here, and we got enough light in front of me here to see what we've got here. That is a Dave Winfield a record breaker. So we'll put the Hall of Famers over on this side. Actually, the Hall of Famers here and the rest of them over here. Rick Wilkins with Cubs. Kenny Rogers, not the singer, for the Rangers. Pete Harnish for the Astros. Denny Neagle for the Twins. Greg Anthony, draft pick. Put the draft picks and the rookies down here. There's a little game card bonus offer. I don't know about that. I'll put the game card over here. I'll put that in my puzzle and oddball card type. No, it's not an oddball card. Not really. I just realized my chat is not there on my... Hold on a second. That is weird. Huh. I just noticed that uh, my chat on my other computer is not working. That's okay. It doesn't have to be because I do have one over here I can still look at. Talking statues? What about a talking statue? Oh, it was the night of the... I, I like that series. I like the night at the museum. Scott Terry with the Cardinals. Juan Bell with the Orioles. Andres Galarga with the Expos. How many years was this for? Oh, he was, he was around for a bunch of years there. Rene Gonzalez with the Blue Jays. Um, Brian Downing. Brian Downing with the Rangers. Boom! We got a John Candelaria with the... We got a Candyman. The Candyman can. The Candyman can. This ain't a Hall of Famer or nothing, but this is this goes into my new my 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 self-appointed uh, collection. This was uh, Bipster of all things wax pack got me started on collecting Candyman cards. So in the not so distant future, we might have a Candyman collection going up for bid. <laughs> on my eBay channel to see how many people might want some a Candyman collection. Or I might keep it. I haven't decided yet. The Candyman. Let me put that up there in my stack and I'll put him where he belongs and boom! There we go. The Big Hurt. Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas. 
Well, and that is his, looks like his uh, second year card for uh, Frank Thomas. Is that his second year? Yeah, that is his second year card for, because his first year was 1990. Boom. That's a nice, nice Hall of Famer there. Frank Thomas, the Big Hurt. Sid Fernandez with the Mets. And Alan Anderson with the Twins. There we go. So we've got the Hall of Famers over here. Draft picks and or rookie cards right there. Let me look through here really quick here. See if we have any other. Oh, Rick Wilkins is a rookie card. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Denny Neagle's a rookie card. See if we have any other rookies real quick. I don't mind. We've got time today. Ooh, he's been there for a while. He's been there for a while, and he's been there for a while. So we did have a couple other rookies in there. Denny Neagle rookie, a Rick Wilkins rookie, and the Greg Anthony draft pick. All right, moving on to our 1994 score. Awesome, I like this on the side. It says, Series 1, look for Dream Team cards randomly inserted. 13 player cards per pack, plus one bonus foil gold rush card. Ooh, so we'll get a gold rush in here. We'll get a gold rush in here. I always like those types of inserts where you're guaranteed an insert card. I always like that kind of stuff. This is like a foil pack here. I remember opening these, not this year, but... Um, There's a Kansas City Royals stadium card. That's pretty cool looking. All right, then next we've got uh, Gene Nelson with the California Angels. Um, then we've got uh, Phil Clark, rookie card, 1993 rookie. Luis Aquino with the Florida Marlins. Uh, Mike Timlin with the Toronto Blue Jays. I think we've got our first. Yes, we do. Oh my. A little bit of stickage going on there. That was pretty sad. But still a cool gold rush for Robin Young. Gold rush card for Robin Young. Let me get that in a penny sleeve really quick here. Did have a little bit of stickage there. But still a good card. Still a good card for sure. Then we got a Wade Boggs, another Hall of Famer, Wade Boggs. And a Mike Musina. Mike Musina. Hall of Famer card. And next we've got a Travis Fryman with the Tigers. Uh, Greg Jeffries with the Cardinals. John Jaha with the Brewer, Brewers, sorry, <laughs> and then uh, Brent Gates, 93 rookie. A little bit of sticky on these cards. Mark Portugal with the Astros, and Darren Holmes with the Colorado Rockies. Check these top few cards here. See if we got any more rookies. That's like a Royals checklist for the team cards there. Uh, let me just go through these really quick. Save me some sorting later. Okay. So that was our rookies right there. So next, we're going to move into some newer baseball cards now for our last four packs. We got two 2019s and two 2020 packs coming up. 21, it, who said oddball? 21 is my bid. I don't know what you're talking about there, for sure, Bipster. All 
right. So let's move on to the tops. 2019 Series 1, 10 cards. I do like this one here because this one here had the 1984 subset cards. Everybody knows until somebody in the channel got me an older set and is making me rethink my process on my sets that I have. But it's cool. It's fun. Francisco Lindor with the Cleveland Indians. At least these newer cards are easier to get the, the rookie cards. Trevor Bauer with the Indians. Um, Steven Duggar with the Giants. Um, Josh Harrison with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Sean Reed Foley with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, we've got Blake Snell with the League of Leaders cards. We've got uh, Lourdes Guriel Jr., Future Stars, with the Toronto Blue Jays. All right, we've got uh, Luis Arias, rookie card for the Padres. We've got Yadier Molina with the St. Louis Cardinals. And last but not least, Corey Seager with the Los Angeles Dodgers. All right. So let's now move on to the 2019 Diamond Kings. I'll have to see if I got... Get anything good out of here. Ah. I, don't, I don't like to... Let me get my scissors for this one. Some of these packs for old guys like me get difficult to open. So I just cheat and take off the top. Alright. So we've got Garrett Hampson with the Colorado Rockies. Rookie card. Jacob DeGrom with the New York Mets. It's the New York Mets. Boom. There we go. Jose Altuve. Jose Altuve. With an insert card there. 205-21. Set that one aside for now. Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra. Hall of Famer. All right. And Al Kaline Hall of Famer. So two Hall of Famers in there. And the Jose Altuve. That's an awesome insert type card. Just set that aside right here for now. For an awesome sort of hit on a star player. Awesome. He always does damage for the Seattle Mariners. All right, my, my least favorite pack probably out of the whole box here, but we'll see what kind of sweetness we can find in this. Tops Big League Baseball 2020 10 baseball trading cards. Maybe we can get a sweet card in here. We'll see. <laughs> Don't know about that one. Jay's Mix Afternoon Doll just stopping in to give you a thumbs up. You know what? Let me double check here because my computer is saying there's only one thumbs up, and I know that's got to be wrong. Seven people watching. We've been streaming almost an hour now. Got probably about another half hour or so to go. We've got eight thumbs up. Eight thumbs up. Thummies up. Thummies up. Thummies up for me. Appreciate that there, Jay's Mix. And appreciate you being there, sir. All right. So let's see who we got in here. Uh, ten... Ten cards in this pack here. So what do we got in here? Uh, Big League Best. 2019 League Leaders. Runs bat it in. What do we got in this one here? We've got Anthony Rendon, Freddie Freeman, and Pete Alonzo. For a base card on that set. Carlos Santana with the Cleveland Indians. John Lester. Got John Lester here. 
uh, pitcher for the Cubs. We've got Charlie Morton with the Tampa Bay Rays. We've got Clayton Kershaw. Looks like we have an insert card or something. Clayton Kershaw with the Dodgers. Boom. Roll call. Roll call. That must be an insert. Yep. Roll. Uh, Cody Bellinger with the Dodgers. Roll call. Let's leave up our inserts we find here. All right. Do something special with those. Uh, Gary Sanchez, orange. Just a variation card, but cool orange card there for Gary Sanchez with the Yankees. Then we've got Shane Bieber, Whit Merrifield, and Ennings Pitch Leaders, Big League Best 2019 League Leaders. Boom. Now our last pack, Magic. See if we can find a good hit out of the Tops 2020 Baseball Series 1. Series 1. Okay. Had to remember. Think in my head where I'm going to put these cards and which, and which of my big 2020 Tops Baseball cards. Except for the inserts. That was just me thinking, what am I doing here? on live YouTube. <laughs> All right. And I'll go through in the newer ones and see if there's any short prints I missed. Uh, Robo Garcia with the Chicago Cubs, a rookie card. Patrick Corbin with the Washington Nationals. Uh, Jesus Aguilar with the Tampa Bay Rays. Jorge Alfaro with the Miami Marlins. Liam Hendricks with the Oakland Athletics. Um, South, South Side infielder celebrate a win. Chicago White Sox there. Steven Strasburg, World Series highlights. Uh, Orlando Arcia. Orlando Arcia with the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, Wade Davis with the Colorado Rockies. Boom! A Bobachet rookie card. There we go. Bobachet rookie card from last year. A Sonny Gray with the Cincinnati Reds. A Josh Bell insert card for the Pittsburgh Pirates home run challenge card. All right. And then next we've got, usually you get a couple of insert cards in the 2020 packs here. We've got the the gold card, Matt Olson with the Oakland Athletics, 1740 of 2020. That'll go in my 2020 gold card separation. Then next here we've got a uh, Chris Bryant with the Chicago Cubs, Turkey Red. Okay. And uh, Jake Arietta with the Phillies. And uh, Christian Va Vasquez with the Boston Red Sox. So not too bad for the some of the finds we found there out of the walk-off wax so far. We'll see what our head is in just a second here. Did get the Bobichette rookie, the Robo Garcia with the Cubs rookie, the Garrett Hamp Hampson with the Rockies rookie, Luis Arias rookie card for the Padres, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., future star card for the Blue Jays. League leaders, Blake Snell for the Tampa Bay Rays. Sean Reed Foley, rookie card for the Blue Jays. Uh, Brent Gates, 1993 rookie for the A's. Phil Clark, 1993 rookie for the Padres. Denny Neagle, rookie. Rick Wilkins for the Cubs. And Greg Anthony, draft pick. Did get a few Hall of Famers here. Oh, almost missed a couple there. I'll put them here like that. There we go. Al Kaline, 
with the Diamond Kings, Yogi Berra with the Diamond Kings, Mike Musina with the Baltimore Orioles, uh, Wade Boggs with the New York Yankees, uh, The Big Hurt, Frank Thomas, Dave Winfield, Record Breaker, and Robin Yount, Gold Rush Card. Okay, and our inserts here. Chris Bryant with the Turkey Red Card, Matt Olson, 2020 with the Athletics, short print. Uh, Josh Bell with the Pittsburgh Pirates, home run challenge. Gary Sanchez, orange, big legs. Um, a roll call, Cody Bellinger with the Dodgers. And Jose Altuve. The DK Diamond Kings 205 series card. So not too bad there. And let's see what we got for our hit. All right, let's see what we got for our hit. Trim off the top here, make it easier to pull out. Let's see, okay, there we go. This is the top of the card, so we will pull it out and see what we get here. Ooh, it's a National Treasures. A National Treasures. It looks like it's a Relic card. Ooh, black, white, and red. And black again. Ooh, a Kyle Wright. A Kyle Wright with the Atlanta Braves. Hmm. Sorry, there's a spot there. I want to make sure it's just on the. I think it's just on the top loader. I <laughs> just wanted to make sure. That's uh, just me being picky. Just me being picky, but it is not on the card. But that is a sweet looking card, that's for sure. It is a 41 out of 99, Kyle Wright with the Atlanta Braves. National Treasures card. Boom. Will Manny ever make the Hall of Fame? Oh, he just would have retired after 2008 season and didn't get that second suspension for PEDs. Yeah, that's just on the top loader on the inside. But nice, nice card there, that's for sure. I'll try to save these bags. I'll save the ones coming up. I can use those to repackage the. <laughs> I can always use the same bag over and over again. <laughs> but that is a nice card. National Treasures, this is from a 2019 Panini product. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The enclosed player used material is guaranteed by Panini America. Nice card for sure. Put that right there. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Jays mix, yay, go Jays. All right, so let me catch up with the chat here. Put that there. Let me put these back here on the side on my brick sorting tray here. Put the insert cards right there. Put our Hall of Famer cards right here. Uh, put this. I'll put that up there for now. Then I've got my Rookie cards right there. All right. And everybody kind of knows now, not in my opinion, for getting the haul. <laughs> Manny being Manny. Yep, but getting twice with PEDs does put a damper on that situation, that's for sure. Cannot use performance enhancing drugs. 
you need to be drug free. How are you going to get new and upcoming baseball players to, to join the group if they say, oh, if you don't want to worry about getting in the Hall of Fame, just take these PEDs and you'll be doing a lot better. And then when you get caught, well, you can, work, you can cross that bridge when you get to it. Oh, boy. But other than that, it is that time of day. So, uh, let me get this ready really quick for our, oh, wait, I do have to open up the lid, don't I, so we can show everybody where we stand in the Bipster box. All right, so we are down to 33 packs left in the box. 33 packs left in the box. There we go. I'll set that like that so you can still see the 33. So again, only the first 33 numbers on the wheel will be acceptable. If we if the, uh, uh, a number of 34 or higher comes up, we'll just spin the wheel again. Okay, so we're going to choose out three packs in the Bipster wheel today. We're going to do three packs in the Bipster wheel. Let me get our little... Things ready, and this here is for the stars. This is for the Hall of Famers. All right, and let me get my device up here. All right, hold on. Oh, there we go. Uh, let me get my wheel of names opened up here quick. Big Hurt is there, but never got caught. Okay, let's open up, open, open up the Bipster wheel here. Through all my the Bipster box randomizer. There we go. All right, so we uh, let me turn on the sound. You might get notifications when they go off on my phone, but that's okay. All right, so again, choo, let me refresh here. Uh, Michael, he, he kind of jumped the gun there. That's okay. You can leave it in there. Don't worry. Okay, but go ahead. I will let the, the timer, the, I'll let my clock run till 11.15 to put your guesses in. Choose three numbers between 1 and 33. Three num just think, the lower the numbers start getting, the better chance your numbers could come out, <laughs> but it will be get get it will be it will be very difficult on the last six packs because then you got a 50-50 shot of getting one right. Robert <laughs> Robert Holmes says 23, 19, and seven. Michael says five, 16, and 21. We've got five people watching. We've got nine thumbs up. Let's see if we can get up to double digits here today before we end the stream. That would be awesome. But go ahead and choose your numbers wisely. Okay? Choose your numbers wisely, and then we will pull the packs out. Socializing with Sonia says 23, 25, and 30. Again, packs, packs... Choose three numbers between 1 and 33. Uh, I saw Bibby post his, thought I post mine. <laughs> oh, 33, 31, and 23. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I almost missed that up there. I didn't even catch it at first. Big Ray Ball Card says, Mantle, Rose, and Trout. Uh, that might work. Oh, but you did put 7, 14, and 27. Okay. So we've got less than a minute to go. As soon as 11.15 shows up in my computer, I will refresh the chat. There will be no more entries. Michael, he says, Hi, Sonia. All right. 
then we will choose our three numbers here. Oh, let's see. Do I get the volume up here? Yeah, I do. I better knock it down a notch or two. So we're not too loud. The neighbors might want to know what's going on up here in this room. <laughs> All right, we do have 1115. No more guesses. We are going to start spinning the wheel, but let me randomize it first. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's try it for pack number one. Pack number 17 is our first pack. Anybody chose 17? Nobody chose 17. Who did we have guests in here? Just Bipster, Michael, Robert, Big Ray, socializing with Sonia. All right, so let's go ahead and pick pack number two. We do another shuffle. Pack number 12 is our second pack. Pack number 12. Anybody get 12? I don't see a 12 in there. No, only four people did guesses. One, two, three, four, five. Five people made guesses. Okay, so 17 and 12. Let me shuffle it one more time. Last pack. Up oh, 41 is not a good number. So let's go again. Close it. Shuffle. Try for pack number three again. Pack number 20. Pack number 20. So did anybody get them right? Let me go up here to my chat really quick. I don't think anybody got it. We got 12, 17, and 20. 12, 17, and 20. Michael got it close with 21. All right, so no winners in the pack numbering, but we still have one more round to go here. We will get ready for, and don't make any guesses yet, please, because I like to give you a chance to look at the preview that we do. Okay, to look at the preview that we do, so you can know from the front and the back of the packs. It's kind of a new thing I started here give you a preview look at the front and the back. So all three are low numbers. So we've got 17, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and 20, 20 17, 18, 19, 20. So that's our three packs for this round. So let me get these out, close the top, and let you take a gander at the front and the back of the packs to see if you might want to make a choice as to whether you choose stars or Hall of Famers. Okay, so we've got uh, first will be 17, is in the middle. 
Next will be 12. That'll be in the middle, and 20. So we've got to put three up here. And that means tomorrow we will have, or no, not tomorrow, Tuesday, we'll start out with 30. Sorry, in case you're wondering. I'm just updating my sticker here to make it 30 <laughs> for next, starting next week on Tuesday. So the Vipster box will take a nap until then. Okay, the Vipster box. Let me give you a sneak preview here. So we've got Wade Boggs, Moose Goron, and Harmon Killaboo. So that's two Hall of Famers right there. Let's check the back. We got Domingo Ramos, Joe Maurer, and Earl Averell. So it's about Averell. It's about three Hall of Famers, three stars. So the Bipsters already, uh, bi new Bipster babies will be shipping Tuesday. All right. So that's our preview there. And again, we'll have these first. So let me. Um, Actually, hold on. Let me scooch this back just a little bit so you can see underneath here our packs 17, 12, and 20. And then we'll do the preview for our stars. Okay. So go ahead and put your guesses in. We'll go until 11.25. 11.25, it looks like Bipster says, I want to go with stars. Um, Big Ray says, Hall of Fame if Bipster is going stars. Uh, have no fear, we will not run out. <laughs> um, is there a category called semi-stars and one for if Hall of Famers? <laughs> Michael Heath chooses Hall of Fame. Robert Holmes says Hall of Famers. <laughs> you guys are funny sometimes. But that's what make it that, that's why we have fun in the channel. That's why we have fun in the channel. It's a nice beautiful day up here in the Pacific Northwest. Nice, beautiful day. While we're waiting, I got less than two minutes to go. Let me turn the light back on. Just for my ease of doing things. Okay. There, I don't think it mattered too much there. Um, as we're waiting, we've got just over a minute to go. Let me get these out of the out of the bags here really quick and just stack them up here. Let me get them out of the team bags and just stack them up here. Makes it easier while I'm waiting for you all to put your entries in here to just get them stacked up here. Get these good to go here. It's amazing how you can find different uses for team bags. And not only uh, in the content on the program, uh, shipping my product, um, different things of that nature. It does make it fun. So we got less than a minute to go. As soon as my computer says 11.25, we will commence to going through the cards and see what we get for Hall of Famers and stars. Again, the Hall of Famer, I should put a little a little thing on here. Uh, Hall of Famers and stars. Socializing with Sonya at the last second gets in her guess for stars. No, you don't have to put in there a tie there, Robert. 
if it ends up being a tie, that means both the stars and the Hall of Famers get the entries. Matter of fact, I might even get generous if we ever have a tie. But we do have 1125. Let me refresh the chat. No more entries. Sonia was the last one to choose. She goes with stars. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, pull off some cards off the stack here. We've got Wade Boggs. We know he's a Hall of Famer. We got Dale Murphy with Atlanta. Dale Murphy is a star player. Adrian Beltre is a star player. Boom! Stop the show. We've got a Bob Denver. We have a star. A star is born. Everybody knows who Bob Denver is, don't you? Who doesn't know who Bob Denver is? Oh my word, let me put him aside for now. But that's a true all-star Hall of Famer. Cal Ripken Jr. <laughs> Cal Ripken Jr. We'll go into uh, Bob Denver in just a second here. Robert Hone says, but it was a rainy night in Georgia. <laughs> Elmer Flick. Elmer Flick is a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Ruby Foster. Ruby Foster is a Hall of Famer. Wade Boggs is a Hall of Famer. Another Wade Boggs. Uh-oh, uh we're in a Wade Boggs run here. Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs. We haven't done Boggs yet, have we? Oh yeah, we did. I could have had those Bob, Bob. Then We got another Hall of Famer. Pedro Martinez. Fairfield Double. Fairfield Friday Double. Wade ba uh, Pedro Martinez. Got another Pedro Martinez here. Uh-oh, Pedro Martinez, Pedro Martinez. You stacked the deck on this one, Bibster. Pedro Martinez, Pedro Martinez. Cal Ripken Jr. Oh, I thought we were going to have another. There's our Seattle Mariner stars. Don't worry, the Seattle Mariners will go right here. Domingo Ramos. Moose Scourun. Scourun? Must be a star player. Hack Wilson. Hack Wilson is a Hall of Famer. Uh, Frank Thomas, the Big Hurt, is a Hall of Famer. That's right, Bob Denver from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> I was wondering if anybody was going to put it in the chat there. Oh, Gilligan, Bob Denver, the actor. <laughs> I always liked Gilligan's Island when I was young watching that show. It was so funny. Five years after his first film appearance in the Golden Globe-nominated farce, A Private's Affair, Denver began the role he would become best known for as the title character in Gilligan's Island. As the moral and comical center of the castaways, he stole the show for three seasons and for decades longer in syndication. He reprised the role regularly for the rest of his career. Bob Denver, actor, and of course... Everybody knows he's a star. He's a star. So he'll go with the star group here. Gilligan has to go for the star. He played Little League Baseball in the Little Buddy League and looked like a beatnik at age 10 before Gilligan, the Gilligan days. He made my Hall of Fame for beatnik Little League players of the 50s. <laughs> Big Ray. Oh, hold on. I forgot to turn my volume off here. You're getting my alert sounds on my phone. Or, that's not my phone. That's just a that's just a phone that's a, de a device for me. 
I do my streaming from there sometimes. So let's go into the second grab here. I wonder if there will be another people in place preview. Don Larson. Don Larson. Star player. Uh, Tommy Henrich. Henrich. Star player. Um, Ted Kluzuski. Ted Kluzuski. Ted Kluzuski. I don't think Kluzuski is in the Hall of Fame, but he is a star player, I guess. Wally Post. Wally Post. Star player. Um, Sloppy Thurston. Sloppy Thurston. Sloppy Thurston. Nellie Fox. Nellie Fox. Hall of Famer. Kiki Collier. Kiki Collier. Hall of Famer. Then we've got uh, Ed De Delahanty, Hall of Famer. Fairfield double. Ruby Marquad, Hall of Fame double. Triple. Got a triple for Ruby there. Robinson Cano with the New York Yankees. Star. Oh, I'm putting these in the wrong stack because I'm off a little bit here. Don't mind me. I'll catch up here. <laughs> uh, Robinson Cano with the star players. Ryan Braun. Star players. Joe Maurer with the Twins. Uh, Victor Martinez with the Cleveland Indians. Um, who's that? Joe Carter with the Blue Jays. And uh, Joe, isn't that Joe Maurer again? Yep, Joe Maurer with the Minnesota Twins. So it's pr looking pretty, pretty even up to the first two rounds here. The many loves of Dobie Gill Gillis. Anyone remember? Harmon Killebrew with the Minnesota Twins. Killebrew, Hall of Famer. Frank Howard. Frank Howard. Star player. Luis Aparicio, Fairfield Double. Kurt Gibson. Not Bob, so star player for Kurt. Luke Appling. Luke Appling. Lou Bordeaux. Lou Bordeaux. We could have used him today. We could have used this one today in our Hall of Fame. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, Hoyt Wilhelm to pull the Hall, a Hall of Fame card play, player on the biography that we did today. That was pretty cool, Lou Bordeaux. Uh, Hoyt Wilhelm. Is a Hall of Famer. Davey Lopes with the Dodgers. Lopes. Star player. Richie Ashburn, Hall of Famer. Leon Wagner. Boy, it's running neck and neck here. Leon Wagner with the Indians. All right, Hall of Famer. Oh, no, uh, star player, I mean. Eno Slaughter. Slaughter. Hall of Famer. We got a uh, prospect cards, rookie card for Rafael Soriano, uh, Chance Cavill, and but that's a rookie card for Rafael Soriano for my Seattle Mariners, and Alvin Davis for my Seattle Mariners, Alvin Davis Fairfield double, Dom DiMaggio, Joe DiMaggio's brother. Gabby Hartnett, 
Art Net. Hall of Famer. Double. Carlos Correa with the Houston Astros. And Earl Averell. Hall of Famer. So we have a pretty close race again today. we got to put star players up here. Oh my word. We're going to have another close to being a tiebreaker for this one. Look it up in YouTube. Uh, that was my beat neck reference, Bibster. Come on now, you're getting slow like the turtle laugh out loud. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. We're going to, that's going to be another close call. Let me set these up here real quick so you can see them side by side. It's going to be another close one. Look at that. We'll see if there's... I don't know. Let's do the stars first. The stars, I think, could edge out the Hall of Famers, but we will see. We will see. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty, twenty-nine cards for the stars. Twenty-nine for the stars. I don't know. It's going to be a close one, that's for sure. Let's go with the Hall of Famers. The Hall of Famers might have edged out the stars again. We'll see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. 34 Hall of Famers. 34 Hall of Famers. So the Hall of Famers won. The Hall of Famers won. 29 stars. Tight race. Uh, I watch Dobie Gillis every morning at 4 a.m. <laughs> I'm sleeping at 4 a.m. there, Bipster. <laughs> Let's go up here and see who chose the Hall of Famers. Who got the Hall of Famers today? Uh, Robert Hone, Michael Heath, and Big Ray. So uh, Big Ray, Michael Heath, and Robert Hone got the win today. At Donald, how do you bring baseball cards to life in 2021 like Ty Cobb? You watch them on YouTube. <laughs> you watch them on YouTube. I know, you, you sent me that video yesterday. That was a classic, that's for sure. So let's get um, Big Ray, Michael Heath, and Robert Hone into the Wheel of Names. So we got Robert Hone, Michael Heath, and Big Ray. I can get you guys in one fell swoop here. Copy. Go down here. And uh, enter, copy, paste, take the one duplicate out. Ah, oh. oh, that was goofy. Oh, wait, oh. There we go. And we've got. 260 entries into the Wheel of Names, and we're about 
through the to tomorrow will will be the halfway mark, but we will be coming back to you live again on May seventeenth. So we are at the halfway month, the halfway mark in the month. Okay, because the end of the month ends on a Monday. Again, we'll be having the end of the month drawing on the 29th of May, and that's the same day as my sale, as my end of month sale. So again, the Hall of Famers won in the Bipster box today. Bipster denied. I know, David. The Bipster was denied. But you will survive. <laughs> so there we go. We've got our... Oh, let me put... Let's see. Let me put my People and Places card over here for now. Let's get my Seattle Mariners separated here. For my Seattle Mariners. My other cards here for Star Players. My Hall of Famer cards here. I think these go with a Hall of Famer card, Jimmy. Okay, line. Yep. All right. All right. And other than that, that's all I have got for you today. So tomorrow again, we will have our next episode uh, searching for awesome rookie cards. All right, we'll be looking for awesome, awesome rookie cards tomorrow. We'll be doing the second half of our box today. That means we'll be doing the first half of box number two next Saturday. Then the Saturday after that will be the sale. So we're having an awesome time here. And then um, I'm pretty sure... I'm going to be starting a new upload series on Monday mornings. And it will be called Historical Mail. You'll have to tune in this Monday for the first episode on my new series, Historical Mail. Okay? And then you'll see how that works out. All right? So other than that, We'll be having some fun. Uh, church retreat starts tomorrow. I will be back on Tuesday. All right, there, Bipster. You're gonna you. You won't be in here tomorrow. That's fine. I will try to remember to put the 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 rookie cards for the players starting with the letter A. I'll try and put one one of each aside for you. Okay. I'll do that, and I'll understand why the Bipster might not be in the stream tomorrow. Thanks for the heads up there, Bipster. So I won't say, I wonder if everything's okay with Bipster. I'll say, oh, that's right. He's at his church retreat. All right. Yay, Monday uploads. <laughs> there you go. All right. So other than that, this has been Donald Blomdahl, Hall of Fame Veterans Sports Cards and Collectibles, having been live to you. This Friday for our Hall of Fame Friday, episode number 27 for Lou Bordeaux, Walk Off Wax, box 6 of 10, and the Bipster box, three more packs. Hopefully you enjoyed the content today and the fun we did have in the channel and the sneak peek preview for our People and Places series that will be coming to... A channel near you after our Looney Tune Tuesday series ends up. Okay? So you all take care. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And as Bipster always says in his channel, be blessed. All right. Bye for now. Take care and have a wonderful and blessed day.